Hi, this is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek, and in today's video, I wanted to show you the difference between color calibration from the old film days and how it's evolved into the digital days, and how the responsibility for the consistency of color and the calibration on the screen has very much changed in where the responsibilities now lie. I'll start here. This is a my personal um, color meter for basically a. Uh, setting up a screen when I install it. It's quite an old one. I got it when it, it was quite, uh, they were quite new and this is one of the first ones that USL started to release. And I've had it for quite a few years now. And basically you, you need a, a laptop, I've got a laptop there, USB cable into there, you run some software, you point it at the screen and you take your X and Y measurements of the red, green and blue and white points. And then you plug that into the projector and then it will then uh, remap the, the uh, points so that the color is actually correct uh, because when you're showing it through the port glass and depending on the type of screen you have etc it's actually far better that we can now um, calibrate the screens on the spot and I'll, I'll go into reasons once I go through the film stuff but now we can consistently tell like the color is going to be correct in the cinema like in post-production when the producers making the film they usually got one of these or probably a much more expensive one and they're usually doing a calibration every day just to make sure that it's consistent through the whole production process and the post-production so that's generally what's happening today but just note there that is now the responsibility for you, you as a cinema owner to keep your screens calibrated um, and you should really do it most likely twice a year but it's once a year is common uh, in terms of getting it calibrated but in the old days uh, film so this is a densiometer this densiometer was used to calibrate um, the film printer that uh, I've done a video on just previously uh, we used to, we um, basically made uh, many years ago when when I was uh, in, in a post-production company I had and I was involved in seeing you know, and other bits and pieces but anyway it's a long story but let's go on about the unit so this is what they use and you've, you get this um, reference card here which is uh, got the reference density densiometer dens density of the different films and how the, the different um, black levels and so when you are color doing your color and you're basically making sure the color of the film is consistency consistent across you know because there's a lot of analog processing there's a lot of chemicals and things that change on a constant basis so you have to keep um, when you're doing film you have to keep calibrating keep checking it on a, on a constant basis to make sure nothing's drifting out too much and i'll go into a story about that towards the end of the, end of the video but on this uh piece of film you've got the different um dens densities and depending on uh the red green and blue or just the white you've got the different values listed on the card and you've got these two um little wheels here and you've got little uh you can see the the color little holes here which is the different colors the different filters for each color and you've got the colors that represent here and there's two wheels one for different types of film two two different types of different film and basically what you do every time you're going to use it you calibrate it to your reference chart here so you make sure that the, the unit is that's how you basically keep it uh, referenced based on on this reference um, density chart here and then from there then you put the other film in to make sure that it's basically got the same you know when you're doing a, a uh, when you actually print a uh, commercial or you're putting anything through through the film lab you used to have the china girl or you just have some other uh test testing sort of frames that you'd have at the very front and that what you, what you could do then is then you could make sure uh, that piece of film that you just developed you could test it to make sure that it's actually all within spec of uh you know you go through here and just check each of those test frames to make sure the density density of the different colors etc are correct and therefore it's processed correctly and what you're going to get what you expect you're going to get you are going to get on the screen so that's how um this unit um is used to calibrate the screen i'll just show you quickly um you put the different densities down here and then you hold it down until it goes on and then the readout will show and it will basically match up with the read, readouts which on on this piece of paper so if you know they're matching up you know it's all good and everything's working correctly and then you get the thing you want to make sure that should be the same you know other your testament content and you do the same thing and you make sure all the numbers roughly all match up and you're all calibrated and everything is good so that's how you do it in the film day so 
film, um, you know, we used to like to call film, it's a bit of a black box, it's a bit of black magic there because it was such a complicated and it's a hands-on and experience driven um, process that it was very hard to get into and to know what you're doing, you had to really get into it with the, uh, uh, you know, labs, etc., and learn it on the job. There wasn't a lot of you could do about reading with the more complicated workflows. Um, but this is one of the things we used to use, um, the Macbeth TD504. Uh, so, very interesting. Now, I wanted to really point this stuff out because it, it brings a very important aspect of going digital. Where was the quality? Where was the responsibility of the colour quality on the screen? Well, back in the film days, the, the, color, the, the quality of the colour was basically done in the lab. It was baked into the enamel. You know, basically, so at the, when you got to the cinema, all you had to do was shine a piece of, of some light through the film and there you go. There was not really much that could go wrong. You just have to have a lamp, shine it through the film, and the colour was the colour on the screen. Now that's very different now in digital. You know, you have your colour color meters, you have to run them every six months really to keep the colour consistency. Um, so it's a big difference in responsibility. And it's probably um, an aspect of, of that cinema owners haven't really understood too well, some of them haven't a lot to have, but uh, as we saw in some of the videos I did at CinemaCon this year or last year, I can't remember, but I did a lot of um, videos on um, colour meters like this, there was quite a few companies starting to show up at CinemaCon um, who have made colour meters specifically for the cinema industry now at good prices and specifically designed to help out with doing the quick measurements you need for your cinema screens and coming at a more cost effective price as well for that type of quali um, quality or uh, very, um, you know, it's extreme work because measuring very tight um, t tolerances so it's quite an expensive device initially. So that's a lot of change, that's a big change in um, from where the quality, uh, baked in colour quality is from film days to digital days. Now finally let's tell, go over a little story. Um, as you saw in a previous video, um, I helped with my brother, we developed a film printer. And it was very interesting going through the process. I, I picked up a lot of knowledge when I was working at Cineon. And when we came across some projects which needed that sort of technology, it led to us developing a film printer. And um, some of the interesting aspects of going through that process over the many years that we did it and ran it and it slowly improved over time. But one of the things about film that I really learned in doing that sort of process is that um, I know a lot of people uh, hold film up quite high in terms of quality, etc. Um, I'm actually quite glad digital has come along because of, like, for an ex experience that I've had in film and calibrating film and keeping film quality uh, across the board, it's extremely difficult and it's very easy for it to go wrong. For example, we used to do a lot of um, commercials, telecines for large. Um, large advertising agencies and when we do the telecine usually we'd go to a cinema and we'd do a test screening to the client so they could okay the print and make sure it was fine and when we used to do that we used to actually run the print through a couple of times and make one big print with it on there two or three times because it was just too much trouble rewinding it so we just print it three times um, but an example of what happens during that stage is, so one day we were doing a, a, a QC to a client and we ran it through and the client comes up at the end and says, excellent, great, but I want the third grade. And, and my staff member says, fine, no problems. But realistically, they were all completely identical grades. Well, they should have been, but they did look slightly different. And this happens all the time in film, which is one of the reasons why I always say, um, get a little bit, little bit frustrated with people and quality of film. Yes, film has got a lot of quality in some areas, but it's got a lot of analog issues as well. And one of those issues is that the baths, you know, obviously that print, the second time it went through or the third time it went through to make the, the copy, went through at a different time in the lifetime of the baths. The baths are actually constantly monitored and, sp and as film goes through them they're supposed to add chemicals to keep the, the same alkaline effects etc. So the film goes through the baths at a certain rate or cer certain time through the baths and the, ba and the reaction has to be controlled very succinctly. And as the film goes through the, it reacts and it changes its uh, reaction time because it's reacted more and the, the concentration of the baths change. So obviously when the film came through a second time it was at a different time and the baths um, 
um, level of reaction had changed and the colors had changed. Now this is common, this happens all the time with film. And I used to quite find it quite strange people to go such extent to make sure that the colors were all always right on these particular films when, when they eventually go to the final print, it's like throwing it throwing at a dartboard with your eyes closed due to the process of film. So I'm quite glad, I think the quality on the screen going digital is vastly improved due to that in terms of consistency of colour. That's in my experience of being involved in that industry. Now I understand still there's a lot of people who like the, the latitude of film and, how, and, the, and the roll off of the highs and some of the, the ways you can see into the, into the low light etc. But um, I think some of the, the qualities of going digital far outweigh that of film. So it's just an interesting story to, have a, to reflect on about how we do the colour control in film the colour control and digital and how it has evolved into what we have today. Anyway, that's James Gardner, the CineTech Geek, and I hope you enjoy my little stories and experiences on the road from analogue to digital for cinema. Bye for now. DCP Player Free. Get it now from digital.net.au.